Oppenheimer is an awesome film, but it's not about atomic bombs blowing up in the desert. It's about reality creation, using occult principles to create the life you want. I found three hidden techniques in the film that I'm going to share with you in this video. Warning, spoilers ahead. Early in the film, when Oppenheimer is talking to General Groves, you know, Matt Damon, he is asked to build the nuke. Groves is like, yo man, I need you to build this nuke. But Oppenheimer has one request. He wants to assemble a Avengers or Justice League type team of super nerds. I mean, he gathers geniuses like Niels Bohr, Richard Feynman, he even consults with Albert Einstein in order to build this nuke. Now, these gentlemen work for many years together, going back and forth, trading ideas, burning the candle into the night. What they were doing was leveraging the power of the mastermind. An idea that was really popularized by Napoleon Hill in his book, Think and Grow Rich. He defines it like this. Coordination of knowledge and effort in the spirit of harmony between two or more people for the attainment of a definite purpose. When this happens, according to Hill, there's a synergistic effect in which all the minds collaborating kind of create a third mind, an overmind, this kind of super mind that gives them ideas that they weren't privy to before. You might have noticed this when you're working with a lot of like-minded people, you start getting some genius ideas. Now, there is some information about this in the book of Enoch, which is actually taken out of the Bible. An egregore represents a spirit or an angelic being that's known as a watcher. There have been many great masterminds in history that show just how powerful this is. One of the most spectacular is known as the PayPal Mafia. In 1998, Peter Thiel and a group of 20 other entrepreneurs formed PayPal. Now, many of those entrepreneurs will later leave, the group will get disbanded. But what was exceptional about this PayPal Mafia is the group all had incredible success. Peter Thiel, Elon Musk became billionaires. Now, the group founders later went on to find other giant tech companies such as Reddit, Stripe, Airbnb, YouTube, and Uber. How is this possible? We all know that the game of business is savage and difficult. How did all these people end up having success? It's because of the power of the mastermind. When you're in a mastermind group with other people, you're Evolutionary mind wants to fit in because in the past, exile from the group was synonymous with death. Yeah, we've moved past that age where we are beating each other up with sticks and trying to survive. Life is good now, but our minds are still at this very primitive state. We still want to fit in. So when you see other high performers doing well, your mirror neurons will start kicking in helping you emulate those behaviors, helping you think like them so that you fit in. So it takes you to the next level of success. This is why it's so important for you to surround yourself with great people. Principle two, the spiritual prototype. In 1904, a new thought philosopher named Thomas Troward popularized this idea of a spiritual prototype. A prototype of a physical thing is its primary version. So when you look at this humongous tower, the Burj Khalifa, before it was even created, before the first brick was laid down or the foundation was set, engineers and architects developed a prototype. The spiritual prototype is the primary reason behind the thought. Another example, a caveman wants to be warm. He's freezing. It's winter. There's nothing going on. He comes up with the idea of creating fire. So warmth and the need for shelter and comfort is the spiritual prototype behind fire. How about a car? You want to move from A to B at a faster rate. So convenience or speed is the spiritual prototype. So a spiritual prototype is the first principle, the feeling behind what drives the thought that leads to the creation, the manifestation of the thing. Why is this important? In the movie, what drove all these men to work together? and to uncover the secrets of energy and mass. It was this idea of the Nazis are going to develop a bomb and mess us up. The Nazis are going to kill our families. If we develop this bomb, we end the war. It's us versus them. These ideas are put into them by the government. So the spiritual prototype was one of survival, one of protecting their family. So we all need desires before our subconscious mind can jump into action and start giving us solutions. There's another thing you have to understand about the spiritual prototype. It's iterative. So 
everything happens in a sequence. We desire to have a car so that we can drive from A to B. Once we develop the car, maybe we desire to have a plane which can move us faster from A to B. Before we develop a car, before we develop a bike, we can't have the desire for a plane because it's far beyond our comprehension of what's possible. Everything happens through a series of advancements, through a series of needs. We first had mail, and then we desired to have a faster means of mail. So we have email. This is how it goes. Now, how do we use this principle? Have you ever wondered how people who are overweight or addicted to drugs need to be told you are going to die before any change takes place? Because before the doctor tells them that you are going to die, they don't have any real motivation to make a change. From a logical perspective, it might make sense to lose the weight, but from a subconscious perspective, it doesn't make sense. When they hear those scary words, the spiritual prototype of survival kicks in the subconscious mind then helps them. When you find yourself procrastinating, let's say you're trying to build a business and you're just procrastinating, calling potential clients, you're procrastinating on creating offers, you're just not feeling very motivated, you need to find someplace quiet and meditate on a spiritual prototype that you can align with your vision. Maybe you have a new son or a new daughter and you want to make sure they have a good life. So you think about the idea of them having safety. You think about the idea of them having abundance of prosperity. You just find something that matters to you and you align it with the spiritual prototype and you will see how your subconscious mind will start working for you and not against you in order to achieve your goals. Principle three, cause and effect. The sixth hermetic law as stated in the Kabbalion is the principle of cause and effect. The principle is very simple. Every effect or result has a corresponding cause or action. Uh, this is visually seen when you're playing pool and you hit a ball and it hits another ball and it rebounds. Even the likes of Isaac Newton who developed the third law of motion, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That's a derivative of the principle of cause and effect. In the side, Newton was actually a student of alchemy and occult sciences. He translated the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus, but that's a story for another day. Every action you have taken in your life has created the world you're living in now. Every thought, every emotion, every single thing you have done is creating your current reality in the now. The problem is a lot of times we can't ascertain what cause led to what effect, what decision we made five years ago helped influence where we're living now or the partner that we have or the occupation or business we're running. So that's what makes it difficult. But when you start to analyze things at a more granular level, you start to have more power in your life. Now, this idea of cause and effect is really highlighted in the movie, which goes through different timelines back and forth through several crucial moments where Oppenheimer has to make decisions. And we see how those decisions affect his reality in the future from uh, hanging out with communist party members to being part of the Manhattan Project. All these things create strife for him later on in life, especially being part of the creation of the atomic bomb, being the modern day Prometheus. Oppenheimer actually mentioned that when he was viewing the Trinity test, a particular Sanskrit phrase from the book, the Bhagavad Gita played in his mind. He knew the world would not be the same. people laughed, few people cried, most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, Vishnu takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that on my heart. Clearly, he had to deal with a heavy burden. We all have to deal with the heavy burdens of our choices. So it's important for you to get in the habit of analyzing all the moves you make in life. The thoughts you entertain, the emotions you have, the actions you take, the people you associate with, the things you read, all these are causes which will create effects of tomorrow. We have complete control of our reality. What are the causes? What are the effects? What are the second order consequences of my decisions? How can I react to negativity, to things that are outside my realm of causation? You know, of course, disasters happen, earthquakes, hurricanes, or economic things that we can't foresee, but we always have the power to transmute that negativity, that effect into a positive cause. 
We do this through stoicism, turning shit into sugar. This is how you create your reality. So those are the three principles, power of the mastermind, the spiritual prototype, and the principle of cause and effect. They were all highlighted in the movie. I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't, but I'll probably spoil a whole bunch. I do this and I promise you'll be one step closer to living and dying well. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell notifications so we can see more of each other. Until next time.